Today we'll compare GPT-5 and Claude 4 Sonnet in terms of large code base coding. I made manual research on a football match and want both models to create integration tests which test different models like GPT-5 Mini, Kimi K2, and GLM to see which one can do deep research better. I'll start with the low reasoning version of GPT-5 against the no reasoning version of Claude 4 Sonnet and we'll start with using them both in Windsurf. One thing I liked immediately with GPT-5 is that it reads more context by reading 400 lines at a time. This is good value in a subsidized tool like Cursor or Windsurf, but would be much more expensive in other tools like Klein and RuCode, which need you to bring your own key. You'll see that Sonnet reads less lines and tries to read more of the file if it needs more information. Sonnet is more efficient in that regard, but it leads to it missing some important aspects of the context. I do have the planning mode on in Windsurf, but GPT-5 is not using it for some reason. I see it created the test to extract the expected output. The init method should take a model name as an argument so it can call open router with a dynamic model, but we'll tell it that later. Let's switch over to another instance of Windsurf and use Claude 4 Sonnet with the exact same prompt. As I mentioned earlier, Sonnet reads variable number of lines in a file to try to minimize context usage, which is generally good. That sound is one of the best features of agentic coding tools. It notifies you when the language model has finished a particular task. It's in all major coding agents currently. Regarding speed, they feel very similar, with GPT-5 fluctuating between being faster and being slower. It started off very fast, declined, and became fast again after Sam Altman announced that they allocated more compute to it. While Sonnet is starting to code the integration tests, we can see that GPT-5 has searched the internet using Windsurf's web search tool and retrieved GLM's open router model ID. Let's tell it not to hard code the model ID, but add it as a parameter. Going back to Claude, we see that it had compilation errors, but is sorting them out. GPT-5 has added the model ID as an argument as we requested. It's very good at instruction following. If we go back to Sonnet, we see that we are required to accept running the test in a terminal. Windsurf should not be asking this because we added .NET in our allow list. We even added .NET test and made sure it's not in the deny list. I complained about this behavior before but didn't move from Windsurf because it sometimes works especially after switching the default terminal around. It seems like they also removed the feature to edit the terminal command and pop it out, which is a bummer. GPT-5 just stopped after the task and didn't execute the test nor build the solution to check if everything is working. This is very bad for such a good coding model. It must be more agentic. Instead, it's asking the user to run terminal commands manually, as if it was not aware of the tools it has available. Claude has noticed a potential issue with Microsoft's semantic kernel AI package, which I use in this project, which selects the first LLM by default, which is an OpenAI's model. We'll see later that this issue also will be discovered by GPT-5. I'm still surprised that the language models hard code some values, which should be in variables, but both will fix this when we test more models. Again, we have to explicitly tell GPT-5 to run terminal commands to verify its code. We'll later update the prompt to encourage it to do this, but it seems resilient. We had this issue more than a year ago when we encouraged model not to be lazy when coding. Okay, Sonnet is the first to get the integration test to run with GLM from OpenRouter. As we can see, GLM is using my Puppeteer MCP server, which is wrapped in a REST API, to do research from the internet. It's also calling Serper to search online like the Google API does. We can confirm that it's actually using OpenRouter. 
We see that the integration test assertions are also working, although failing because null values are returned if most data is missing. We have to unfortunately add these extra prompts to encourage GPT-5 to not give us recommended actions, but take the best actions according to current industry standards, and not stop to ask questions too frequently. Unfortunately, the prompts don't entirely work. Let's ask GPT-5 to duplicate the GLM test, but use Kimi K2 on the new test. I have to mention that they both got the integration test to use GLM at approximately the same time, even though Sonnet was a few seconds ahead. The price difference between them, though, suggests that GPT-5 is better value for money thus far. Both models produce similar tests and outputs, so it's a draw. If we look at the deep research benchmark that they just created, I'll use Claude Sonnet 4's version, we see that Claude Sonic 4 leads the benchmark, being the fastest and most accurate, followed by GLM 4.5, which I didn't expect. If you look closer though, you'll see that GPT-5 didn't run because it wasn't available through OpenRouter. Let's add OpenAI credits so we test GPT-5 as well. Please subscribe so we test more of these models with real-life scenarios and real code bases. I'll export this windsurf chat and import it into cursor as context. Let's ask GPT-5 to add a GPT-5 integration test. Then we'll see how well it does with deep research. Here are the results, and it's most definitely not what I expected. GPT-5 got 7 out of the 11 data points right. To put this into perspective, the best score was 3 out of 11 items correct by Claude 4 Sonnet. This is extremely impressive and has led me to immediately change from using Kimi K2 to using GPT-5 for my football deep research. I simply didn't expect such accurate agentic capabilities against the other top models. I had to check the raw output of the model myself to verify that the results were accurate. Most models don't even attempt the head-to-head -head history of football teams. If these are the assertions it got wrong, then it's even better than I thought. It had 13th instead of 13 in this case. If we look at the usage, we see that it only used around 12,000 tokens, which isn't a lot. For the second work item for the day, we have a front-end issue, whereby the bottom navigation text is misaligned with the icons. Then the third work item is that clicking the slips button pops up and immediately closes. It must stay open. I have the git branches of both language models and we see that GPT-5 fixed the alignment and the pop-up in one shot, not zero shot though. Claude 4 Sonnet produced the exact same results. Also, they both didn't fix the bug that hides the navigation menu when the slip is open. So software engineers still have their jobs. For now.